Overview of ST7 8-bit microcontrollers, ST Microelectronics. Welcome to this training module on ST Microelectronics Overview of ST7 8-bit microcontrollers. This training module provides an overview of the ST7 8-bit microcontroller family and their key features. The ST7 has a CISC architecture, which has up to 60 kilobytes program memory and a voltage range of 2.4 to 5 volts. The ST7 is based on a von Neumann architecture, that is, there is only one address space in which program, data, and input-output peripherals are mapped. Here summarizes some of the features of the ST7 microcontroller family like architecture, peripherals, and scalability. The ST7 has one address bus of 16 bits and one data bus of 8 bits. The core provides six internal registers used to store and calculate all CPU operations and a controller block that is used to decode and execute all program instructions. The picture shows the different families available to the ST7 microcontroller family, like ST7 Lite, ST723, STWIND, ST726, ST7MC, and their targeted application areas, like low-end, mid-range, RF, USB, and motor drive. Here gives you a brief idea of the key applications where the ST family family devices are targeted. The ST7 family consists of more than 50 microcontroller devices available in 16 different package types, ranging from 16 to 128 pins with flash from 1 kilobyte to 60 kilobytes. Most products also have compatible ROM versions. It supports every type of application like smart sensors, large, small home appliances, as well as utility metering, car body, telephonics, computers, process control, and alarm systems. The block diagram shows the core of the ST7 microcontroller. It interfaces with the peripherals and memory through the address data bus. The ST7 has one address bus of 16 bits and one data bus of 8 bits. It has enhanced instruction set featured core, which offer both power and flexibility to software developers, enabling the design of highly efficient and compact application code. The core is built with six internal registers and a control block which decodes and executes the instructions and the arithmetic and logic unit. The core has six internal registers. They do not have memory addresses. They can be reached only with specific instructions. The reset value of the program counter is, a two, is two bytes located at address FFFE and FFFF hexadecimal. That's the reset vector. The reset value of the I bit of the condition code register is 1. The memory stores both the program and data. The ST7 memory is linear. There is no pagination. So, up to 64 kilobytes can be addressed. RAM 0 and hardware registers are addressed using short addressing modes. The address is coded in only one byte instead of two for the other parts of memory. All the data located in zero page, RAM 0, have faster access and generate less code when accessed than that located in other locations. The ST7 Enhanced Interrupt Management provides hardware interrupts, software interrupts, that's traps, and nested or concurrent interrupt management with flexible interrupt priority and level management. The interrupt service routines should end with an I return instruction which causes the contents of the saved registers to be recovered from the stack. The clock is generated from the multi-oscillator. 
up to 16 megahertz. If the clock security system is activated by an option byte, the clock is filtered or replaced by the backup oscillator frequency, which is around 300 kilohertz. The frequency, called FOSC, is then sent to a clock divider to become FCPU. FCPU is the clock sent to the core and to all peripherals. The clock divider is used to enter the slow mode. FCPU can be output on one pin called MCO, or Main Clock Out, to drive other chips. There are three reset sources in ST7 devices, external reset source pulse, internal LVD reset, low voltage detection, and internal watchdog reset. The reset state is very important and has to be taken into account during the application development. The IOs on ST7 are in a floating input state during the reset phase in almost all the devices. The purpose of the LVD is to ensure that the ST7 always functions in its safe area. When VDD is below the minimum working VDD, the behavior of the ST7 is no longer guaranteed. There is not enough power to decode or execute the instructions and or read memory. When VDD is below the LVD level, the ST7 enters into a reset state in order to prevent unpredictable malfunctions. The extended flash memory technology is based on double EEPROM technology. It provides extended features such as byte per byte reprogramming and data double EEPROM capability. The devices are available between 1 kilobyte and 16 kilobytes of memory size. The high density flash memory is based on flash technology. The high density of the HD flash cell is used for devices with 4K up to 60 kilobytes of flash memory. This memory is programmed byte per byte but erased by sector. The double EEPROM memory matrix is made of 8 rows. Each row is 32 bytes. The cell is built around a 32 byte latch where the bytes are copied using the five least significant bits of their address. Then the road is selected using the eleven most significant bits of the last write access to latch and the previous written byte are loaded from the latch to the double EEPROM memory matrix. An interrupt can be generated at the end of the programming cycle depending on the value of the E2ITE bit of the control register. The two bits E2 LAT and E2 PGM set the operation of the double EEPROM cell. There are two ways of programming the device, in-system programming and in-application programming. The implementation of in-application programming depends on the user application software. The data to be programmed into the X-Flash memory is read from an external controller using a communication method called user protocol. This user protocol can be a SPI, SCI, CAN, or USB interface. Here explains in-circuit communication protocol. Testing or debugging tools can be written using the ICC protocol. The in-circuit communication protocol is used by the ST7 microcontroller to communicate with an external controller. It is half-duplex serial synchronous communication protocol using two lines ICC clock and ICC data. ICC enables an ST7 microcontroller to communicate with an external controller with only four wires including VSS. This protocol is used to download a program into the RAM for execution. The diagram illustrates all I.O. ports of the ST7 processors, the core, the memory, the power supply, reset, and watchdog blocks are all present in ST7 devices. 
there is at least one timer and are I.O. ports for input and output electrical signals on all ST7 devices. The ST7 family offers a very flexible feature on its parallel I.O. where each bit can be independently configured as either an input with two options or an output with also two options, open drain and push pull. There are 8-bit and 10-bit resolution analog to digital converters in the ST7 family. The input range is positive. Negative voltages are not converted. The ADC is fed with the core clock frequency. The analog multiplexer is driven by channels 3 through channel 0 of the analog to digital control and status registers. This selects which analog input has to be converted. The analog signal is sent to the sample and hold of the analog to digital converter where the value is converted. At the end of the conversion, the EOC bit is set and the result is placed in the data registers as it is a 10-bit analog to digital converter value. No interrupt can be generated due to the speed of conversion. The conversion time for a typical ST7 8-bit analog to digital converter running at a frequency of 4 MHz is 3 microseconds and for 10 bits is 7.25 microseconds. This slide shows the 16-bit timer which has the following features. There is a prescaler block and the bits CC0 and CC1 configure the frequency of the timer. There is a free running counter register for the 16-bit counter. There are timer overflow status flags and mask will interrupts associated with the input capture and output compare modes. There are two output compare functions, each with two 16-bit registers, two status flags, and one mask will interrupt. There are two input capture functions with two 16-bit registers, active edge selection signals, status flags, and one dedicated mask will interrupt. There is one status register and two control registers. The SPI is built around an 8-bit shift register with both ends of the shift register brought out to microcontroller pins. One end of the shift register is connected to the master in slave output pin. This pin acts as the input for the master SPI module and has an output for the slave SPI module. The other end of the shift register is connected to the master out slave in pin. The CPU begins a serial SPI transfer by writing a byte of data to the master SPI's transmit data register. All 8 bits of data will be automatically transferred serially out the master's MOSI pin synchronized to the master S clock output pin. For each bit shifted out, of the master's MOSI pin, a bit is shifted in through the master's MISO pin, allowing full duplex communications. The control on the SPI is done using SPIDR, SPISR, SPICR, SPIE, SPE, SSM, and SSI bits. The SCI is connected through two I.O. pins, TDO and RDI. The data register is made of two transmit registers, one buffer and one shift register. To start a transmission, the user writes to the data register. The first time the shift register is empty, and so the byte goes directly into it and the transmission starts. A flag indicates that the buffer is free, so the second byte of the frame will be placed in the buffer. When the transmission of the first byte is ended, the second one goes directly to in the transmit register of the transmission and the second byte starts. The SDI line is connected to the data control and the 8-bit shift register of the data register. There are two own address registers. After a start condition, the first received data is compared to the value in the own address register. Here gives you an overview of basic USB interfaces. Bus transitions can be done using full speed, low speed, high speed, 
and synchronous and asynchronous mode. USB can have up to 127 devices connected to a network. This shows basically how USB host and USB devices are going to communicate with each other. The page shows you the ST7 devices that support USB. The ST726-3B series is a low-speed USB mode and the ST7-SCR has high-speed USB features. Here explains the basic operation of the CAN controller. ST7 microcontrollers use exclusively basic CAN. Full CAN is dedicated to more sophisticated controllers like the ST9 or the ST10. This slide shows the block diagram of the ST7 CAN controller which has transmit receive buffers of 10 bytes each. It supports the CAN 2.0B specification up to 1 megabit per second. ST7 controllers that embed CAN are the ST72T511, the ST72T5989, and the ST72T55, and the ST72F521.